Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was seven years old. I vividly recall standing in front of what looked to me to be a brown marble birdbath in a church. Only the priest, my parents, my twin and I were there. I had my shiny Mary Janes on, so I knew something was special. I just didn't know what. I can still feel the ice cold marble under my hands as I steadied myself on the rim of the bird bath while on tiptoes so I could see what was in it. Sure enough, it was water. I have no further recollection beyond that ice cold water pouring down my face. That was it. My parents gave me a children's Bible that day. They may well have preceded it with the instructions, but I have no recollection. I remember the cover of the Bible had a beautiful picture of Jesus with children on the front. I knew it was Jesus because three years prior, I had gone to a Methodist nursery school where I learned what Jesus and the burning bush looked like because I colored them. In the years that followed, I did not go to church except for weddings and baptisms. They seemed like parties because everyone was dressed up. Happy people came from all over the place, took a lot of pictures, and ate a lot of food. These religious rituals represented rites of passage to me and little else. It was what you do. Looking back, I would have loved to have known more. Baptism was not an official part of Judaism at the time of Jesus. However, it may have been practiced then by the Jewish Essene community at Qumran as a sign of repentance that could be repeated as often as needed. But it is not known if their practice was in any way connected to that of John the Baptist. John is the last prophet of the Old Covenant. His primary role was to call Israel back to faithfulness in anticipation of the coming reign of the new God. This baptism was a call to repentance and forgiveness, to make straight the way of the Lord. It marked all who received it as belonging to a new community, awaiting a new realm one to be ushered in by the Messiah. The age-old question is always, if Jesus is without sin, why did he get baptized? There are as many answers as there are theologians to articulate them. Some say that Jesus' baptism was a symbolic act because in it, Jesus passed through the water like Israel of old to emerge as the new Israel out of bondage and into the promised land. Perhaps Jesus' baptism was meant to indicate that he fully supported John's mission and had come to fulfill it. Perhaps when Jesus was swallowed up by the Jordan, he turned from his old way of life, 30 years in obscurity, to his new, very public ministry. Jesus may also have chosen to be baptized to reveal his identification with all the broken people in line with him. After all, he has always allied himself with sinners, outcasts, the poor, the suffering, and the least. Were he to have stood apart from those gathered at the Jordan, just watching their baptisms, they may have, they may have taken, he may have been taken for John's wrathful Messiah, whose winnowing judgment would commit the chaff straight to hell. Instead, our gentle Lord stood in line with us in the hot sun, 
waiting his turn. One last thought on why Jesus may have sought baptism. Perhaps he may also have had a personal reason. Perhaps he wanted to stand upright before his father in the company of God's people, facing God's prophet, to say yes to God's plan for him. His immersion into the waters of creation would signify his new life and ours. Indeed, once the baptized Jesus was in prayer, the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, and God told him and all gathered that Jesus was his beloved Son, with whom he was well pleased. That day, the Trinity was made manifest as the one God received, affirmed, and blessed the yes of Jesus in the muddy waters of the Jordan. Because my confirmation instruction at age 21 was so poor, and I didn't know enough to know it was poor, I did not truly understand what baptism was until my first year of seminary at age 23. As you know, and I learned late, Baptism occurs once in our lives, although we can renew our vows and recommit to them. According to the Book of Common Prayer, baptism is full initiation by water and the Holy Spirit into Christ's body, the Church. In this sacrament, we are adopted by God into God's family, given God's own life to share, and reminded that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ. This means that we are God's own with the promise of forgiveness, eternal life, and God's unfailing, unconditional love. <clears throat> Baptism tells us that God wants each one of us for God's own. We are important. We matter. We are loved beyond measure. In addition, the Holy Spirit comes to us and remains with us in baptism. This Spirit equips us for our Christian journey as we offer God everything we are and everything we have to live as Jesus for the sake of the world. Baptism is about identity. We know who we are and whose we are. It symbolizes our desire to do God's will and our gratitude for God's grace and mercy when we miss the mark. Many of us think about baptism when we attend one or when we renew our vows as we will today. That's good. But Martin Luther suggested we should be baptized daily, not literally, so as to experience repentance and forgiveness every day and undergo a cleansing of our lives. Other reformers said that every time we wash with water is an occasion to remember our baptism and the promises we made and those made to us. What a lovely, simple way to remember who and whose we are with thanksgiving every day. What would it be like to remember our baptism whenever we wash our hands? Would the Holy Spirit use our paws to ground and strengthen us? Would we be called to prayer? Awaken to our ministry in all aspects of everyday life? Delighted that we are God's beloved in whom God is well pleased? Would we simply smile knowingly in peace? Well, I think it is time we found out. Amen. Amen.